Good. Good morning. I'm Chaplain Rhonda Good, and thank you, Charlotte, for playing. Take thou my hand, O Father, where he leads me, and the ninety and nine. If you regularly watch devotions, you have probably figured out by now that I enjoy learning about the story behind our hymns and our songs that we sing. Sometimes the meaning of the song is enhanced for me when I know the motivation or the inspiration the writer had for creating the hymn. Today I'm going to share a bit about the hymn, The Ninety and Nine. This hymn is based on a well-known story Jesus told. The story is short and is found in Matthew and Luke. Each writer included a few different details, and since it's a short passage, I will read both accounts. In Matthew 18, 10 to 14, this parable comes after Jesus answers the question about who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He tells the disciples they are to be like children and to welcome the children. Jesus said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety and nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. In Luke 15, 3-7, this story is placed with the parable of the lost coin and the lost son. Starting in verse 3, Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Elizabeth Clayfon wrote the words to the song, The Ninety and Nine. She was born in Scotland and grew up in the village of Melrose. During her brief illness, or I'm sorry, during her brief lifetime, she was plagued with illness and her body was frail. Despite her physical afflictions, she often helped the poor and those with disabilities. The people in her town affectionately knew her as Sunbeam, or the Sunbeam of Melrose. Elizabeth enjoyed writing poetry and had several of her poems published in a Scottish Presbyterian magazine. Elizabeth wrote the text for the 99 shortly before she died. It was published in a newspaper for children. Five years later, the American evangelists D.L. Mudi and Ira Sankey were in Great Britain for one of their revival campaigns. Mudi was the preacher and Ira Sankey was the song leader. As they were riding the train one morning from Glasgow to Edinburgh, Sankey stopped to buy a newspaper, hoping to get news from America. As he idly looked through the newspaper during the ride, he discovered Elizabeth Clayfon's poem. He tried to interest Moody in the poem, but the evangelist was too busy preparing his sermon. Finally, Sankey, Sankey simply cut out the poem and placed it in his pocket. At the meeting that <clears throat> excuse me, at the meeting that afternoon in Edinburgh, the subject of Moody's message was the Good Shepherd, based on Luke 15, 3 to 7. When he finished preaching, Moody turned to Sankey and asked him to sing a solo that went along with the sermon. 
Sankey could not think of anything that was appropriate. Then suddenly, he remembered the little poem he had put into his vest pocket. He placed the newspaper clipping on the organ in front of him, and breathing a prayer for divine help, he struck the chord of A flat and began to sing. Sankey said that it was one of the most intense moments of his life. He said that he could sense immediately that the song had reached the hearts of the Scottish audience. When I reached the end of the song, reported Sankey, Mr. Moody was in tears, and so was I. When, Ms. when Moody arose to give the invitation for salvation, many lost sheep responded to the call of Christ. A short time later, Moody and Sankey visited Melrose, Scotland for an evangelistic meeting. Elizabeth Clefon's two sisters were in the audience. You can imagine how delighted and surprised they were when they heard their deceased sister's poem set to music and learned of the great spiritual impact it had. When I was a little girl, I spent a lot of time singing. I sang a lot with my sister, and sometimes our whole family would stand around the piano and sing together while my mother played the piano. But I often sang by myself as well. And for some reason, this song, the 90 and 9, was one song I always liked to sing by myself. Every time I sang it, I got teary-eyed and choked up. When I read the story about the writing of this song, I realized that I am not the only one who was deeply moved by this song. I think the image of Jesus going over rocks and thorny bushes to get a lost sheep was meaningful to me. But I also think that in my young mind, I was moved by the thought of Jesus loving me so much that he would do whatever it took to find me. And at the end of the last verse, or at the end, when I got to the last verse and got to the end, I would sing extra loud when I got to the lines, Rejoice for the Lord brings back his own. Rejoice for the Lord brings back his own. So I'm going to pray, and then I asked Charlotte if she would play another verse of the 90 and 9 with great gusto, because that's how I always like to sing it. And if you know the words, I hope you will sing along. So let's pray first. Jesus, we thank you that you are our good shepherd. We thank you for the way you care for each of us just like a shepherd cares for his sheep. And I pray that you would help us to continue to listen to your voice. Amen. Amen. 